All right, today we're going to be talking about using our envelope generator as a modulation source. As we work our way through the crave, we have to begin to understand why things work on a synthesizer. And it's all done using electricity. In the case of synthesizers, we call that control voltage. So whenever you see CV or VC blank somewhere on your instrument, that's what it's referring to. So we have the oscillator control voltage, voltage controlled filter. Here we have the voltage controlled amplifier control voltage. That's what uh, this section is doing. We're passing electricity around inside of our instrument. The knobs either set a voltage, like sustain or frequency or cutoff, or they alter it like the attack and the decay in the oscillator mod. And the toggles, they tend to choose where those velocities are being sent, what things are hooked up inside the instrument. Now, if you remember in our last video, where we talked about the envelope section, we talked about the attack time would go up, and the decay time would go down, and then sustain set a level. So, if you can keep that in mind while we talk about how it modulates, other things besides volume, it'll be easier to understand. Attack adds voltage, decay removes voltage, sustain sets a level. And just like with the volume section, this is a one-time modulation. So when I press a key in the volume, it will do this until I let go of a key and then it finishes. It doesn't repeat the process. It just It's a one-time thing. It's a triggered action. And so the only way to get this modulation to happen again will be if I press the key again. This is unlike the LFO, which is just a continuously running thing. So in the envelope, let's set our attack and our decay time to their maximum levels. We're going to set the sustain to zero, and we're going to make sure it's turned off. In the oscillator section, let's set our pulse width to right around the middle. And then the oscillator mod and the mix knob, we're going to turn all the way to zero. We're going to make sure that we're turned on our square wave or our pulse wave. Otherwise, this knob doesn't do anything. We're going to set the source this time to envelope. It was usually defaulting to LFO. Now we're going to use the envelope. And then we're going to set our destination to the pulse width. So this says we're going to use the envelope to send the output of this knob to the pulse width knob. And what the oscillator mod does is it adds voltage to the pulse width setting. From adding zero, when it's all the way down here, to if I turn it all the way up, now it adds the full amount that it can to wherever this is set. So if I turn this all the way to zero, and I press a key, we heard it go through its volume process, right? It went up and it went down, but we didn't hear any change to the pulse width, and that's because the modulation is set to nothing. Now, if I turn this up a bit, we'll hear it essentially turning this knob up, and then it'll go back to where it was. So now you hear it go through that process. It would be like if I was sustaining this and I just turned the knob, and it would change the, the pulse width. Now, if I turn the pulse width all the way down, and I leave that in the middle, You'll hear it move from a very thin sound to the full sound, and then back again. Now, if I turn this all the way up, then you'll hear the full range from very thin through its square space back to really thin on top, and then it'll come back down. Now, that by itself doesn't take us through our full range because this only adds so much frequency. If I turn the sustain knob all the way up and turn it on, I'm going to hold a key down. Now I'm sustaining as far as this can help it. Now if I turn this, you hear it getting thinner and thinner until it vanishes. Now when I let go, it'll decay back to that level.
Now, on to pitch. Let's set this destination to frequency. And then just for a new thing, and to make sure we're not thinking about pulse width, we're going to set our shape to sawtooth. Don't change anything else, and we're going to press a key. Oh, and so we can hear that the oscillator mod is now adding a bunch of frequency to whatever frequency is being generated by the keyboard. I can set the attack time to be faster. I can set the decay time to be faster. And so just like with volume, what happens is the attack is going to go as far up as it can before dropping to the sustain level. Right now our sustain level is 100%. It just stays as high as it can go. And then when I decay, it drops to zero. If I turn the sustain to here, you're going to hear the pitch jump all the way up to this, drop to that, it'll decay to the sustain level, and then when I let off the key, it will decay back to its regular level. And, of course, we are still hearing the volume changes as well. And just to prove that we're hearing volume, I'm going to turn the sustain down. So this is not only setting a lower sustain to the modulation, it's also setting a lower sustain to the volume. So it's really quiet, but it's still there. You can hear it. So, uh, the fact that volume and modulation are always happening at the same time can kind of obscure some of the effect, and we're going to address that idea in a couple minutes. So, before we start talking about how to modulate the filter section, uh, let's reset our envelope to 0, 0, 100, on. We're going to turn the oscillator mod all the way down, just to make sure we're not getting any siren sounds. We're going to toggle the filter mod source to envelope, and then set our cutoff knob at about halfway. And then set the resonance to about 3 o'clock. And remember, the resonance knob helps us hear where this frequency is. And so if it moves, it's helpful to have the resonance as a little uh, arrow pointing at it. So, just like the oscillator mod changed the value of this combined with this, the VCF mod is going to alter the value of the cutoff mod, or the cutoff knob, sorry. Here, however, we can change the direction in which it changes, right? Here, it was always a positive addition. So with this set, toggle set to positive, the mod is going to add to the cutoff frequency and raise it. So right now I just have sustain. So we're just hearing this note, the medium cutoff and some resonance. This is set to positive. If I turn it up, You can hear the resonance rising. If I set this to negative, it's going to subtract from the cutoff frequency. So it's going away. Let's turn up the resonance a little bit. So it's moving in a negative direction when I do this. Okay. So it's important to understand what's happening with the positive and negative, and then how that is affecting this, and how that is affecting this. Now when we use the envelope section, it's a little easier to understand. So, set our cutoff all the way to nothing, and our mod to max. And then we're going to set our attack and decay to about 2 o'clock. Leave the resonance right about there. And then for right now, I'm going to turn the sustain off. Hmm, we're not hearing anything. What did I do? <laughs> oh, my modulator <laughs> is still set to negative. Set that to positive. There we go. So you can hear that the resonance goes... So it's turning this knob really quickly up, and then because of the decay, it's coming back down. Let's switch to a high-pass filter. Now 
Now that sound is also being affected by the resonance knob. Because when the resonance knob is up, it actually lets in some of the lower sounds again. Alright, now, uh, the next thing I was going to show you, of course, is the thing I accidentally already showed you, <laughs> which is, if you set your modulation polarity to negative, what I'm doing now is I'm subtracting the maximum amount from the lowest frequency, which is why we heard nothing. So, we have to turn our cutoff all the way up. Now we'll hear the resonance fall, and then when I let go, it'll decay back up. And again, because we're altering the volume, because envelope is hardwired inside to the volume, we don't hear the whole effect very clearly. Now, I could use the patch bay in order to connect the output of the filter directly to the amplifier. So going from the VCF out directly to the VCA in. And that would remove the envelope's effect on volume. But there's another way we can do it. It's a really simple way. Uh, which we talked about several videos ago. We could just turn the VCA mode on. Right now it's set to envelope. So now we're hearing a pitch. I'm just gonna turn that down so it's not so loud. There we go. Now, we are hearing a constant sound, which is something that we would have to deal with using the patch bay. But if I press a key, I can hear the effects of the VCA, VCF mod. Without losing any volume while I do it. All right, so there you go. We are almost done with the main panel of this instrument. We still got to talk about the LFO, LFO shape, and glide. Those are the only kind of main things left on here. VC mix is directly attached to the patch bay. Uh, and then we have the sequencer section. So uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, for me, this was one of the hardest things to understand when I first started with synthesizers, was understanding how all of these pieces begin to work together to change sounds. So hopefully that was somewhat helpful to you, and we'll see you in the next one.